Yes, certainly on the back foot. And I think what's the most interesting thing about this story is the fact that it is still rumbling on. Usually when a minister resigns, that sort of case closed, end of story. But this this story is going into its third or fourth day. I think that speaks to two things. One is Rishi Sunak's inexperience as a prime minister. Remember, this is a politician who was only even elected in 2015 and was chancellor for really not very long at all. Now prime minister, he's struggling to bat off those accusations from Keir Starmer. Normally a prime minister would be able to say, you know, He's resigned. What more do you want? Rishi Sunak didn't do that, and it, he let it bleed into most of the PMQ's session. The other issue is that the Conservative Party is still very split. Just a few weeks ago, the Conservative Party was pretty much in open civil war. Then it m managed to rally round Prime Minister Rishi Sunak. But those tensions are never far from the surface. The Prime Minister's claiming that he didn't know of any specific allegations against Gavin Williamson. But Jake Berry, the pretty annoyed former party chairman, it's claiming that the Prime Minister did know what was being alleged against Gavin Williamson, which means that that story just can't quite go away. And that's a serious problem for Rishi Sunak. The fact, of course, that he didn't sack Gavin Williamson, he actually resigned, or although indications he was made to resign, perhaps we shall see. But um, the other aspect is that his comeback line, uh, again, was Jeremy Corbyn, which, you know, was a bit of a sort of uh, deathly silence on his back benches when he used that line. And I'm just learning now that in the Commons, uh, Jeremy Corbyn has said he's grateful for my continued rent-free tenancy in the Prime Minister's head. Uh, response to the fact that he's been brought up at three PMQs in a, in a row without prior notice. Um, I mean, Rishi Sunak's got to try and find a better line, hasn't he? Well, yes, Jeremy Corbyn was incredibly unpopular with the public in 2019. So I can see the temptation for the Prime Minister to keep hammering home the message that Keir Starmer did campaign for Jeremy Corbyn to be made Prime Minister. The problem is that now Jeremy Corbyn has had the whip removed and is no longer really a Labour MP, and the fact that Keir Starmer is ousting Corbynite candidates left, right and centre, we know that they're being moved, removed from selection lists even now, does sort of undermine Rishi Sunak's point. It also points out, I've spoken to quite a few MPs actually on both sides of the House, who feel that one of Rishi Sunak's weaknesses is an inability to think on his feet. He's mm. a great planner, he's a very hard worker, as we know. He's always the first into his office in the morning, last to leave in the evening. And when things have been properly planned out, he's fantastic. What I've heard he's not quite so good at is coming up with good riposts or throwing something back or, or moving quickly in line with events. And I think we saw that over the weekend with Gavin Williamson. He just couldn't quite get a grip of the situation on time. He dithered. And I think that's exactly what we saw in Prime Minister's questions today as well.